Greetings, everyone, and welcome to TCG's Dissected, the show where I review trading card games. I am your host, Planeswalker Giraton, and today I will be reviewing Magic the Gathering. But first, due to this being my first review, I want to explain why I wish to do the series. So I've been playing card games since far I was about five, started off with Yu-Gi-Oh, and never left the TCG scene even if I did leave the Yu-Gi-Oh scene several times. As such, I've played so many card games I have legitimately lost count. About four years ago, I started playing them a bit more seriously when I found the store of Neko cards and picked up a Vanguard deck. Ever since, I've been a budget competitively playing trading card games. I've played more P TCGs than Mario games, as such, I felt more qualified to review TCGs than reviewing video games or even the anime I've had, like I have. But enough about myself, let's get into the review. So for this series, I will reveal my final scores before explaining them. This may change, but the idea is to give you guys an idea of how I'm reviewing a particular game before I explain why my scores are what they are. I'll be using a Reddit score system for this series with a bit of math behind it for total scores and that. So how did I rate Magic the Gathering? Well, here are the scores. I've given gameplay in A+, rules A, B, Ease of access, a C, cost, a D, art, an A+, and fun factor, a B+. Did these scores surprise you? Well, it would if you consider Magic the Gathering the best TCG out there. The final score will be given at the end of the review. Now, I'll get to explain to the reasons for my scores. Magic the Gathering was the first ever trading card game the first to make trading cards into a legitimate game. Some played top trumps with their football cards, with their stats, and a few other games sprung from them as well, but no one had actually created a game where trading cards were designed to be used in a game. The best part about this was the first is currently still considered the best. This is awesome and one of my favourite aspects of the TCG genre. The three main reasons the game has lasted this long are gameplay, competitions, and balance. Magic the Gathering is the benchmark for trading card games. If you do not match or go higher than Magic in one of these three aspects, your game has most likely failed. So first, let's get over one of its strongest elements, the gameplay. Magic the Gathering plays as so. You start off with 20 life points and 7 cards in your hand. Your deck is normally 60 cards, but can go higher or lower depending on the format and your decisions. But in standard, you should almost never go over 60. Your goal is simple, reduce your opponent's life to zero. There are other ways to win, but they are difficult to pull off if your deck isn't built for it. You can play cards in a few ways. First, you have lands, and this is an aspect I've known people not to like and even not even play the game for. And that's what you use to put, generate mana. The mana generated can then be used during that turn to play spells. Each spell has a cost indicated on the top right hand corner and if you meet the costs with your current mana, you can play the card. You can only play most cards during one of your two main phases, one before you attack and one after, with exceptions applying to cards with flash and instance. If you play a creature card, you can attack the turn after it's played unless it has haste and can block opposing creatures during your opponent's turn. When you attack, you attack with all the creatures you wish to attack with all at once, with your opponent then declaring blockers with their own creatures. Each creature has an attack and some have abilities that may affect the battle. Their defense value shows how much they can take before they are destroyed, and each creature's defense is restored at the end of the, at the, end of the turn. The game is actually quite simple. I've always said that magic is a simple game, until you start throwing in any of the cards. As such, I have given gameplay an A+. The main issue and source of most of the fun had with Magic the Gathering is the complex rule set that it has for how nearly each and every card in the game interacts, with every situation of the game you can have. And when you have a trading card game that's released more than 600 new cards nearly every year and has been going for about 20 years, well, you have sort of a problem. 
That is why there are not only judges that have to take exams to become one, but also levels of judges. You will be confused as a new player, and you will be continued to be baffled about how each card interacts with each other, possibly for the entire time you play Magic. This makes becoming a new player want you to play against higher level players very intimidating. You will lose your first tournament no matter how good your deck is, unless it has broken cards and even then, or on that later. Another issue in, for the barrier of entry is that the pre-constructed decks nearly always lose to a decently built deck. If you want to enter any tournament, you must build your own deck or use a deck list made by somebody else. You can't exactly buy a deck off the shelf and expect to win some games. You shouldn't expect that in most TCGs, but this is still one of the three biggest offender splitters, the others being Yu-Gi-Oh! and the Dread Pokemon TCG. However, you can find packs and singles for Magic the Gathering everywhere, so finding cards isn't difficult even for a new player. This ease of access allows the bar of entry to be lowered a little bit. Plus, Wizards is always giving away free cards if you know where to find them, and you also have to give credit to the rules of how well balanced the game is with such complicated rules, and how the rules have developed fairly over time when more and more cards were released. Kudos to Wizards of the Coast for that. As such, I have given rules a solid B, and ease of access a C. If you have played any trading card game competitively, you will know that cost is an important factor in any trading card game. And Magic is no different. Magic is the world's biggest trading card game, so when a card is really good, it's really expensive. Magic is known as the most expensive trading card game of all time. Yes, even more expensive than the filler filled Pokemon card game in Yu Gi Oh! with its crazy ban lists and a bit of lack of balancing. However, there are many ways to play Magic and each will change your budget. As a budget player myself, I have found that one of the best play ways to play the game is in drafts. Drafting is when you have to build a deck using freshly opened packs. What you do is you open one of your packs out of the pile you were given, number depends on your group, and take one of the cards and add them to your selection of cards. Then pass the rest of your pack on to the next person in the direction chosen beforehand. Check direction will interchange between packs, and you will receive a pack from the other direction and pick a card from that pack. Once all the cards in the group's first packs are cleared, they go on to the next pack, when all the cards are gone, you then build a deck from the cards you have picked. You then battle with the other players in the group. Normally you get to keep the cards you draft, making an interesting experience. But the best part is the tournament level for these events can cost you about $20 during Friday Night Magic events, and $40 during massive events such as pre-releases, and most of the time you get more packs from doing so. However, if you want to get into Magic's main dish, then Standard is the way to go. Standard is when you use cards from a select group of sets, normally the last 4 sets, and build a deck from them out of the 60 cards to how many you can shuffle without using a table. This is where your wallet starts to run out of cash as you need to get the best cards out of the latest sets, and some of those cards will go out of date once, this is, once the next set is released. This is both a good and a bad thing, but considering how many games that don't use this system tend to end up, the benefits far outweigh the negatives of this system. This is because it allows the set designs, designers to balance the system between each card's power and not make a giant broken game that is impossible to get into as a new player, because you don't have 10 year old cards that you need just to, put, just to compete. This improves its balance at the cost of, well, cost. There are other formats that also affect the cost, such as Commander, the casual format, that costs depend on how mean or fun you want your deck to be, Legacy and Vintage, me using nearly every card ever released into a game, and one in which uses an interesting rule relying on card borders, being the indicator of what cards you use. Heck, people even make their own formats and set using any cards they like. However, due to the popularity of the game, good cards are expensive no matter where you go. For a good deck, you will spend over $150 on singles at least. As such, I gave cost a D rank. While art isn't the most important thing in a TCG, it's still rather important. 
As Magic the Gathering is the oldest trading card game out there, they've had a lot of time to get their uh, familiar art style going and to get it right. Magic uses a western fantasy art style that can fit into anything in the MTG universe, and the cards rarely differ from it. If western fantasy isn't your thing, then this is not the game for you. And I know a lot of people who have this issue. But if you love the art style, you will be blown away at the quality and detail of the art. This part of Magic gets better every set, so I'm excited to see how it will look in the future. As such, I have given art a perfect A plus rating. Fun Factor. This segment is going to be very personal, but it's an aspect I can't skip. Magic's Fun Factor is entirely dependent on the, your community and how you play. A casual playgroup is always a good place to start, even if you want to get into the competitive scene. The best part about the Magic experience is interacting with other players. There are many entertaining content made by the Magic community out there, my personal favourites being the Friday Night's web series by Loady Ready Run and the Limited Resources Podcast. Your involvement in the game is almost entirely dependent on who you play with. That what isn't dependent on this is how well you grasp the other aspects I have mentioned in this review, particularly the rules. However, any way you want to play, chances are you can play that way. So, chances you will play this game and enjoy it. If you don't, blame the mana system. Everyone does. As such, I have given Fun Factor a very solid B+. Magic the Gathering is a fun, competitive, and widespread TCG that can't be beaten in popularity. If you're new to the TCG scene though, it is difficult to get into. Though most likely you have played at least a few games of this if you were watching this, so getting all my marks together, I have given Magic the Gathering a final rank of a B+. Thanks for watching everyone, hope you enjoyed the video. Next up is a brand new TCG under the name of Conjure, completely designed and developed here in Australia. You may just be shocked by the score of banks. If you want to see more of my reviews on anime, you can click my second channel icon here. And if you want to see me and a few friends talk about Buddy Fight TCG for an hour and talk about Buddy Fight decks, you can check out Future Fighters Cast here. However, that's all for now. Giratonic.